Greetings one and all, and welcome back to the channel. I hope the week is going well for you all. So, we have had a lot of requests for movies lately, and that list is still growing, which is awesome, but it was very hard to pick today's movie. So I threw all of those things into a randomizer I found online, and out popped one of my all-time favorite movies that I personally don't think enough people know about. So today, we are watching... The Adventures of Buckaroo Banzai Across the Eighth Dimension. And it is quite the title, but it is also quite the movie. So let's get to it, because this is Red Eye Reviews. We start with a good old rolling Star Wars script, telling us about the man that is Buckaroo Banzai, a world-renowned kind of renaissance man of sorts, who has a gang of super geniuses that uh, are also in a band with him, and they're called the Hong Kong Cavaliers. We see a bunch of scientists getting ready to test a rocket-powered car, but we're not quite sure what the reason is yet, and our hero rocket car driver is late. Where might old Bonsai be? See, this is the point where, for me, it started to look like a problem. I mean, you know, I wanted to sacrifice the precentral vein in order to get some exposure. See, you can check your anatomy all you want. When you get right down to it this far inside the head, it all looks the same. That's right. Buckaroo Banzai is running late to test drive his rocket car because he is performing brain surgery with Jeff Goldblum, which is a sentence I never thought I would ever say in my life. So Banzai and his mentor, Dr. Hikita, have perfected a device that they call the Oscillation Over Thruster. This is a device that should allow you to pass through solid matter. So Banzai straps on his gear and gets ready. Three, Three, start, two, two, check one. Banzai takes off, and while flying down the course, he heads straight towards a giant mountain. He's broken the sound barrier. Just be cool. And oh, this incredible human? This guy's named Perfect Tommy, and uh, yeah, he is just too great. For whatever reason, he has an outfit change in almost every scene in this movie. So as this video goes on, just count how many jackets this guy has. And the only explanation we are given is because he is perfect. So whatever that means, Banzai enters this mountain, and the device works great, but it throws him into a place they weren't necessarily planning, the eighth dimension. And we kind of see it's full of horrors. Whatever the hell is going on here, he does, however, get out of here. He breaks through the other side of the mountain and succeeds in his test. We have him. Chase two reports a visual of 100 miles off the he also finds a chunk of living matter stuck under his car. So this is something he can use as proof to the place he just traveled to does in fact exist. We cut to John Lithgow. Uh, he plays Dr. Emilio Lazardo, who is currently in the nut house. And through one of the most intense and hilarious memory devices I've ever seen in a movie, we get a flashback of him and Dr. Hikita back in the day trying this exact same thing. But he tested it before it was really ready, and it got him stuck in between dimensions. And while his head was in the eighth dimension, an evil alien took over his body. That's right, folks. This movie is also about aliens. So get ready. Let's rock and roll! <laughs> oh yeah, did I forget to mention Buckaroo Banzai is also a rock star? Yeah, that's right. This dimension-spanning, rocket-car-driving brain surgeon is also a rock star. Excuse me, is someone out there not having a good time? Somebody crying? With the best ears of all time, as he can hear crying in the middle of this club with very loud music playing. But meet Penny Pretty. She is down on her luck, and Buckaroo Banzai has taken a shining to her. We don't have to be mean. Remember... No matter where you go, there you are. Okay, that, it's easily the best line in the entire movie. It makes absolutely no sense. And it makes perfect sense at the exact same time. And I, for one, am going to put it on a shirt one day and wear it very proudly. No matter where you go, there you are. So Penny is at the end of her rope, and we see that she's also brought a gun tonight. 
but she's not planning on attacking anybody. She's planning on killing herself, but a passing person messes up her plan, and she fires off into the ceiling. And at this moment, we learn that all these super genius rock stars are also packing heat. (laughs) And by the looks of it, some of them know how to use their guns a bit better than others. And this guy right here, he's just kind of excited to be there. We cut back to Dr. Lazardo, who is informing some other aliens that the time has come to meet up and get ready to leave the planet. Hey, Monty! Of course it's me, you fool! Who do you think? Oh, yeah, and the other alien's name is John Big Booty, (laughs) which I'm going to explain that a little bit later. We can also go ahead and add Samurai to his rapidly growing list of skills because he is also a Samurai. But the group goes to leave the town, And on their way out, they pick up Jeff Goldblum, who has decided to be a cowboy at this point, and might I say rockin' that cowboy outfit. And also due to Bonsai's fascination for this penny girl, he goes back and he picks her up from jail. Anything's possible. Let her out. Let her out? Yeah, let her out. Which, yeah, Buckaroo Bonsai has the power to free people from any jail in the world with the wave of his hand. And give you a coat. Why me? Because you're perfect. You have a point there. So, they are now doing a press conference with the world media to discuss their findings with the 8th Dimension. They want to show off that bit of, like, organic matter that he found. But during this meeting, Buckaroo gets a call from the president. President of what? President of the United States. Oh. If you're still questioning how one man is so incredible, I I can warn you, just don't. Just stop right now. (laughs) It only gets more impressive from here. During this call, we get our first look at some aliens, and they just look incredible. I love the costumes. But they send an electric zap through the phone that shoots inspiration into Bonsai's head, and he quickly writes an equation down on his hand before running back into the conference room in dramatic fashion. Evil! Pure and simple from the 8th dimension! Grab him! (laughs) Oh no! The evil aliens have been outed. So they have a hard time in this movie explaining that not everyone can see these aliens right now. The average person sees them just as people. But Bonsai, because he got zapped by the phone, he can see them as they truly are, which are aliens. So these aliens do run away, but on their way out, they manage to kidnap Dr. Hikita. But some other aliens now see this unfold, and they know it's time to intervene. So they send down this big bird-looking spaceship. A couple of hunters see it, they think it's like a massive turkey, and they give chase. And these two are great. They're like hillbilly comedians. They have some of the best banter in the entire movie. Give me some light, will you? I got two guns in my hand. Put one of them down. I ain't putting the guns down. Run, run! Run! There's something coming out. Where? Out of the top. And then we see another alien. And this one looks Jamaican. Throw me my gun, Bubber. Throw it. However, he gets surprised, he falls off the ship, and he hits his head, and it kills him instantly. (laughs) Uh, We cut real quick to the rest of the group. They're looking for Buckaroo, because he took off Chase to try to, like, capture those other aliens, and he wants to go rescue Dr. Hikita, so the group calls for help. Calling all Blue Blaze Irregulars in the Garden State. This is Scooter Lindy, Junior Blue Blaze Irregular, 41 and a half. Hang on! And at this point, go ahead and expand the universe a bit, Because we have learned that there's an entire network of people across the world just waiting to respond to distress beacons. You know, just in case Bonsai's ever in trouble. Also back up. Great couches. Back at the crashed ship, the bad guy aliens have now shown up and they start acting like it's their ship. We also see now that Christopher Lloyd is one of those aliens too. Yeah, he's in this movie. Bonsai reaches the doctor. Bakaru, give me the formula. Okay, so because he wrote the formula on his hand and Dr. Hikita wants it, he just re-wets the ink and he sticks it to the man's forehead. And fun fact, he has that formula written in reverse on his head for the rest of the movie. So we learn that one alien is still inside the ship, one snuck out and found a way to get away, and... John Baluk is dead. He fell on his head. Yeah. John is dead. He fell on his head. You can't get a better line than that. But the evil aliens find Buckaroo hiding, 
So he sprints off, he runs away. However, while running, that little kid with the awesome couches rescues him in a helicopter. But while this is happening, the Hong Kong Cavaliers are hacking into the mainframe of a company called Yo-Yo Dine, which was on the truck that those evil aliens drove, so they assume maybe there's some connection. All these people applied for social security cards in the same town in New Jersey on the exact same date. And now it hits us. All the aliens in this movie are named John. And it's amazing. There are some great John names. I personally love John Little John. That's an awesome one. There's John Smallberries. There's John Yaya, and of course, John Big Booty. John Big Booty, officer. So the nice Jamaican alien, John Parker, shows up, and he wants to help Buckaroo and the gang, and he has a message for them. So then they put on their special uh, message-seeing glasses, which, they look like this. (laughs) And I'm pretty sure it's bubble wrap. I think it's bubble wrap with, like, just little eye goggles on it. But it's awesome. It allows them to see this message come through from this lady alien named John as well. Um, She's the leader of the Black Electroids of Planet 10. And yes, I'm sorry, this movie's getting complicated. They're the Black Electroids of Planet 10. Those evil aliens are the Red Electroids. The Red Electroids are basically a bunch of old white people, and the Black Electroids are all Jamaican. I don't know why they look like this when they choose to be humans, but that's what they are. So the Black Electroids banished the Red Electroids to the 8th dimension. However, now that Bonsai has shown them that he can travel to that dimension, the Red Electroids want to get their homies back and take all the peeps back to Planet 10 and kill the Black Electroids. So they need Bonsai's help to stop them. And uh, if they don't, they will bomb Russia. (laughs) Which, I don't know if that makes up good aliens or desperate maybe, but they're going to bomb Russia, they're going to make it look like the US did it, and they're going to start World War III. So we have some incentive to help. The Red Electroids break into the base as well. They want to steal that overthruster from them. But the doctor gives it to Penny Pretty. But as she's running out, she runs into one of the aliens and she gets kidnapped herself. We then cut to the president of the United States, uh, who has thrown his back out. I don't know why they decided it this way, but it's so good. So he's in this contraption. (laughs) It's so funny. Every time he talks, it just kind of moves a little bit. And his advisors have to, like, bend down in order to see his face. But he has been informed about the issue at hand and the aliens and all this. He's just as confused as the rest of us. Electroids, planet 10, nuclear, extortion, a girl named Sean. And at this point, the bad guys call Buckaroo. They tell him to bring the device to them or they will torture and kill Penny. So they come up with this plan to get inside and rescue her. Buckaroo just drives the truck in. He lets himself get captured while the rest of them will kind of like sneak in using various methods. I am scared. I'm barely holding my punch right now. Yeah, me too, man. Me too. But this is no time to panic because we have Buckaroo Bonsai. I don't know, but Buckaroo Bonsai has never been wrong before. Exactly, lady. Exactly. See, even the president's advisors know about Buckaroo. Why wouldn't they? So the president has been informed of the situation again, and he fears that they may have to declare war on Russia if this plan goes sideways. But they're in a hurry, so they use the short note, and it's so funny. Declaration of war, the short form. If you want to declare war in short form, uh, date, time, and name of enemy. (laughs) That will declare war. Inside the base, we see the red electroids. They're like basically kind of college bros. Like there's beanbag chairs all over the place. They're just hanging out, like eating snacks and kicking it in their messes. We cut upstairs. We see Bonsai is starting to get tortured. But once his friends start attacking, the power goes all haywire and he manages to escape. There are monkey boys in the facility. Do not attack. Oh, and yeah, they call the humans monkey boys. (laughs) So whenever they refer to humans, they're like, get those monkey boys. That's really good. But Bonsai and the gang, they rescue Penny. But she's also been tortured. She's not like, she's not doing too great. Bonsai then sneaks aboard the ship with the black electroids so they can stop the red electroids. And the alien ship is just like icing on the cake. It's so good. You drive it with your feet. I don't know why you drive it with your feet. The seat belts are like these suspended harnesses made of foam and stuff. So when like it gets turbulent, the guy's just like bouncing around in this harness. One more word out of your big booty. He calls the guy Big Booty one more time. 
and it's Big Pute, obviously. He hates that. They get in a fight. He just shoots him, because at this point, he's like, I'm done with Big Booty. But while in the ship, their little ship gets ejected. So Bonsai and the good alien are forced out into the sky. Bonsai learns how to drive an alien ship in, like, five seconds flat, you know, because he's a super genius. And they successfully blow up the ship, and they save the world! Everything okay with the alien space club from Planet 10, or should he just go ahead and destroy Russia? Tell him yes on one and no on two. Which was yes, destroy Russia, or uh, number two? Uh, we then get the closing credit sequence, which this is the icing on the icing on the cake, because it's probably the best thing ever to appear on screen. And what's so good is at one point, Perfect Tommy changes outfits mid-walk, and this other dude notices, and he's like, what the hell? How did he do that? It's amazing. And to top it all off, the final shot of the movie, Buckaroo Banza. <laughs> it's misspelled. They misspelled their own name of the movie. And you could tell by the washed off letters behind it. This was not the first attempt at spelling this correctly. <laughs> but yeah, the movie plot is over. But I still have some stuff to talk about. So one of my favorite parts of this movie are just there's random props and things all over the place. So if you look in the background of like half the scenes, something weird is going on for no reason. And here's some of my favorite. I love the crucial missing circuit. And now we finally get our butts off this rock. Okay. He's just sucking on a battery. These are what alien tables and chairs are, people. Are they tall enough to get into those things? No, they're the same size as people, but their furniture needs to be taller. No sign of Buckaroo. The professor just uh, wrote up saying something about space monsters. There's grapefruits all over this office room. They don't explain it, but there's just a lot of grapefruit. The prop is in the uh, lab with the old professor. Penny's in the right wing guest room. Great. Everybody's safe and sound. Little like choice, Buckaroo. As soon as he gets back from fighting aliens, his assistant hands him a lollipop. <laughs> I actually didn't notice this one until my most recent watch, but what is going on out there? That dude's like leading another dude with like a hook. Boy, no work, work, work. And then just a ton of lava lamps because they're college bros, I guess. I don't, <laughs> I don't know why. They never explain the lava lamps. They're just there. And if I had to pick, I think my favorite character is probably Jeff Goldblum's character because he acts just like Jeff Goldblum who hasn't been told what the movie's plot is about, and he's just kind of figuring it out as they happen. You know, I'm a big fan of all you guys. I love the comic books and the records. I know you. You're Pecos. Is President Cone 240 minutes remaining. Penny still has the overthruster, but this psycho warfin doesn't know that. Why is there a water bill in there? I'll tell you later. Spoiler alert, we never find out about the watermelon. So we don't know why it's there. You know, I thought we were going to rehearse or something. Yeah. But now, lastly, I did pull out a few more clips, so let's head on over to Red Eye Reacts. What is it? Buckaroo Bonsai. It's the latest issue. It's the latest issue, and it appears to be the only issue because it's volume one. Nice night, huh? Nice morning, huh? <laughs> Buckaroo Bonsai. Where are we going? Let it real soon. Big booty, activate your probes. Big booty, activate your probes. That is everything. I hope you all enjoyed this movie as much as I enjoy it. If you haven't watched this, please go out and watch it. It's amazing. I left out so so much because for real every single scene has something great about it that you will not get all of them in just one watch it's baffling it's confusing but it's one of the most entertaining movies i've ever seen so thank you so much for watching please subscribe if you liked the video hit the bell to get reminded of new videos thumbs the video up leave some comments if you have seen this movie i would love to chat with you about it because almost everyone i talk to has never heard of it and it's so good so I can't wait to chat. If you want to chat with me in the meantime, join the Discord channel, link down below. I'll see you in there. And until next time, stay happy and stay healthy.